Okay, so welcome everybody to the session of DevOps Basics. It is extended session about the DevOps Basics. So in the previous session, in the teaser, I talked about DevOps Basics. I'll just skim what we discussed in the video. If you have any quick question, and then I will elaborate. Uh, I added some new topics, okay? Okay, so as you know, I talked about the development in the video. Is it just coding? What's DevOps? DevOps values, wall of confusion, DevOps tool chain, is DevOps engineer a title? And uh, uh, I will talk, elaborate more about CICD during this session and the three ways, a concept called the three ways. But you know, mostly for me, my mindset towards the principles, the values, more than the mechanical part. Frankly speaking, I hate the mechanical part. I don't like the mechanical part. I like the principles. And if I want to do the mechanical part, this is my way of thinking. I go to the values, to the principles, to the theory, then I apply the mechanics. But I don't like to uh, jump to the mechanics like a monkey, you know? So I, 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 know, I want to understand the uh, background and the context behind it. Okay, I'll skip this one, I'll skip this one. If you remember in the video, I talked, what's DevOps? There are different, it is a buzzword. Everyone is saying DevOps, DevOps, DevOps. But for me, this is like the definition which I follow. DevOps is a combination of, uh, let me use the pen. It is a combination of culture, philosophies, practices, and tools that increase an organization ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity. So for me, if you ask anyone uh, DevOps, they will have different meaning. Majority, they will consider only Jenkins, like to know Jenkins, to configure Jenkins. But it is not like this. It is more than this. So it is culture, mindset, and tools. So it is not only tools. It is not only Jenkins. It is a big topic, okay? While is yawning, while is sleepy. Tired? <laughs> okay, and then I talked about uh, that DevOps complement agile and the values. I will not repeat it. And the wall of confusion. And I mentioned something about continuous integration, continuous uh, delivery and continuous deployment. Any question on what I discussed in the video so far? Any questions? OK, so let me elaborate on the concept of CI-CD, especially CI. So, so there are different concepts. Uh, first concept is continuous integration. Another concept is a continuous delivery and continuous deployment. So for you, part of your culture, you need to understand what are these, you know. So first of all, the continuous integration. It is continuous integration. <laughs> Someone told me, what does it mean, continuous integration? I told him, continuous integration. So it is continuous integration. All the time you are integrating. So you have five team members, you are working at the same time. So continuous integration that you are integrating all what you are delivering to the mainstream, to the main branch. So this is continuous integration, right? So it, it starts by building the packages, doing testing, deploying to staging, and uh, doing acceptance testing. So what's the difference with the continuous delivery? This is another step. There is a manual step before going to production. And continuous deployment, there is an automatic step when delivering to production. Like Amazon, Google, you know, they have thousands of deployment a day. Automatically, it goes automatically. But many companies, they have a manual step before going to production. And it is a business decision, you know. They will make a business decision. It is not a technical decision. It is a business decision. 
to, start to decide to deliver to production or not. Just keep this in your mind, okay? Any questions so far? But Amazon, Google, these uh, Netflix, thousands of uh, deployments per day, thousands to production. Because of that, they are billion uh, companies, even a trillion. Any, any comments, any questions? I don't like to jump. I like to focus on the basics, you know. Is it clear for everyone? Show me images that images that it is clear the concept. Yes, sir. Salam. Pardon me. I couldn't understand the difference between manual and auto. You know, what is happening there? So uh, here, here, I have a, a release, a software, a, a service, which is ready for production. But I don't push it to production until a business decision is taken. For example, some companies, they will say, I mean, the client, the customer, they will say, this, this, come, this will come as an upgrade. And it might take two, three hours um, uh, downtime. So I don't want this to happen. Do it after three months. So it will happen manually after three months, after two months. Although the service and the feature is ready, is available. But isn't it because uh, in the continuous deployment, the owner of the product is the company itself and the company? No, 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 no. It is kind of the uh, uh, the business model and the confidence about the application is like seamlessly upgrading and not causing any troubles on the uh, client uh, environment. Like, um, let's say, let's say, iPhone or you know they make the upgrade and seamlessly it's little small downtime and it will continue but some other companies like network operators such a kind of giant big uh, telecom operators they will say no every three months make me the upgrade although the feature is available did you get the idea yes now it's clear thank you so these are the key differentiator. But as a developer, as a developer, your main concern is here, the continuous integration. This is your starting point. If you don't have continuous integration, you cannot have continuous delivery. You cannot have continuous deployment. So this is the main focus here, right? And this is another picture. Like, uh, in, this is like, for example, you, Hisa. You are developing your uh, own environment, local environment. And as mentioned by uh, Payment, you are using virgin control and so on. And you have static analysis like Sonar Q. But now Arsalan is pushing another code. So what happens? So how this will collaborate? How this continues? How you will be production ready? How you will have uh, a seamless integration? the concept of a continuous integration and by chance it is jenkins it's, there are many other flavors it is jenkins now using as, as a jenkins server to create your ci cd but here it will collect all these pieces from coming from arsalan from sara from uh, from hisam uh, goresh uh, anyone it will collect all these com uh, comments which you already pushed integrate them with each other, test them, and push it to an integration environment, staging environment, make it run a set of test cases, make it ready, make sure that it is successful, and then push it to staging, make it ready for a production or for a staging, a pre-production environment. Did you get the idea? Okay, let me take a step further to explain the idea. So. I want you. I want to show you the flow, the workflow. So the primary goal of the CI, I will not talk about continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Let's just no, look at the basics. CI. So the primary goal is to create a consistent and automated way to build, package, and test application. Again, the goal of CI 
create a consistent automated way to build package package and test application so you don't want to be in a chaotic situation sometimes it is working sometimes it is not working sometimes this is there is a major uh, there is a conflict what they call it um, uh, payment what's the terminology conflict there's a conflict yes what they call it um, Merge request conflict. There was a terminology for that. Conflict, you mean? Sorry. Merge conflict. Merge conflict. Merge conflict. Yes. So there is a merge conflict, and you know, a lot of hassle. There is no consistency in the integration. So here, at CI again, consistent, automated to build, to package, and to test the application by how integrating regularly to detect error quickly and locate them more easily. So this is the goal of CI. I hope this is clear. Yes, Hissam. Uh, I have a question. In the CI, uh, we should have some functional tests as well, or, or it is limited to you integration or good, good question. Uh, unit test. Good question. Because functional tests, in some cases, might take more than three hours. Or yeah, yeah, sure. Longer. Sure, I will come to this. I will come to this, Hassan. I will come to this. Okay. Okay, but let's go through the flow and then we talk about the testing, right? So first, the code commit. So what happens uh, during this stage? Developer makes change to the software code in their local development environment. Like you have a new feature, bug fixing, some modification. Once you are satisfied, you commit the changes to a shared uh, Git repository, right? This, this is interaction with the CI server. So this is the first step, right? Then next step, there is an automated build. CI server keeps an eye on the repository for new commits, any changes. When it detects a new change commit, it automatically retrieves the latest version of the code from the repository. Right? So this is the flow. So what's next? The CI server starts the automated build process where it compiles the code into executable program or prepare it to run and ensuring the code builds successfully with the new changes. So this is the next step. Code commitment as a developer. Then the server make the automated building and packaging. Then automated testing. So what happens alongside building the application, the CI server runs a series of automated test cases. Now back to Hissam's question. What does it include? Unit testing, integration, functional testing, and sometimes basic performance testing, maybe. Maybe. There is no limit, Hassan. So there is no limit. Or compatibility on mobiles. So there is no limit. And you know what, Hassan? Uh, let me continue. Because, you know, you will run it um, maybe every hour. You run with a small set of test cases. But in the night, while you are sleeping, you compile all these, integrate all these pieces together, and you run it for four hours, eight hours, you are sleeping. You run basic regression, functional testing, integration, basic performance. So there is no limit. The limit is the sky. But you can customize it according to your need. Basic sanity, you can grow it. It depends. When, when are you running these test cases? In which stage? in your life, in software life cycle. Yes, Saisa. Uh, question comes to my mind. Uh, for example, in our company, we have some uh, functional tests. It takes more than eight hours or 10 hours to have full tests, but we have some tests which are quick tests. Uh, exactly. Quick tests might take around three hours, but we cannot run the test each time we uh, merge the code. You know, it takes a long time. Yeah, yeah. How can we ensure before merging? Because yeah. last yeah, yeah. day happened to me, we merged the code and 
poor developers was struggling to find what happened during the last year, you know, last exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. So this How is a question. This efficient. is a very good question. This is a good question. A very good question for any team. And you know the answer. What I answer it usually. It depends in which stage you are, right? So if it is a three hours, and I want to get a feedback within fifteen minutes, I make a set, take a set, basic set of test cases. They very basic functionality. Which runs in five minutes. This is one set. Then during the night, I run another set of test cases, which will run within eight hours. For example, I will select one hour of functional test cases, right? Then during the weekend, there are two days, like doing nothing. I can run the whole set of test cases. So it is kind. This is my answer, you know, Hassan. You will do it. You shorten, you make it customized according to the, the feedback which you want. The more quicker you start with a basic set of case, test cases, better than zero test cases. Then in the weekend, more. In this end of the sprint, more test cases. After two weeks, more test cases. In the night, a small set of test cases, and so on. So you can play with the scope, but you need a set of test cases. Right? Did I answer you? Yes, thank you very much. Of so, course, you know, uh, Arsalan, the, the one who owns the code, owns the test cases. This is the responsibility. End-to-end -end responsibility. If I own a, a piece of code, I have a component X, and I am running the unit test cases, I'm responsible. I have a set of uh, functional test cases. I'm responsible to make it uh, green all the time. So the one who owns the code owns the test cases also. But in some cases, system testing, performance testing is done by another team. This is the responsibility of the performance or system testing. Right? OK, let me go another step. Then after you run the test cases, and this is a step for a feedback and correction. So what happens? Developer receives an immediate feedback if their changes cause any issues, typically notification. You will receive an email notification that the build is uh, broken because this and that. So what will happen if there are any problems? Developers are expected to, uh, to address them uh, promptly, make the necessary correction, and commit changes to, get, to restart the uh, CI cycle. And we have one concept. A stop and fix, which means there is, you know, in factories, there is like they press uh, a button or pull something, a uh, rope, that they will stop the whole production line if something is broken. So stop, stop, and fix, right? So you stop everything to get the build green. They call it a green build and red build. Green, it is successful. Red build, it is failing. So there is a concept. Please keep it in your mind. Stop and fix. And mere changes. What happens once the new changes pass all the builds successfully and they integrated, they are considered as uh, as stable. These changes can be merged into the main branch. So this can be merged to the main branch. Okay. I hope this is clear. Like the workflow is clear for you. Uh, one point that I mentioned here as well that even from the last step is not going to be finished as well so when you do the merging again another pipeline could actually you know trigger and all of these steps that you mentioned it would be also uh, moving forward as well right imagine thanks Bayman. imagine if you don't have ci all this happening manually imagine how many years you will uh, end up ages <laughs> Right? So imagine we have a team of 200 or 500 in our organization. Imagine if all these are done manually, what will happen? 100 years after we deliver something to the customer? Chaos, basically. So what happened? What happens or what will happen if we don't have CI? 
increased integration issues. I will not go deeper. There are many details, just quickly. Increased integration issues. And I remember Suzanne, she mentioned they were first doing back end, front end, then they did the integration. It took them six weeks, and then the project manager left the project. They couldn't manage to continue. Because you know why? It is an accumulation of problems. Like if you these problems accumulate one way, one day after day, it is not linear complexity. It is exponential. The one who knows uh, uh, mathematics, they know it is exponential. It is not linear, and you end up you cannot fix anything. Then low lower code quality, delayed feedback, slower release cycle, increased manual work, a frustration between the team, decreased team collaboration, higher cost. So, so imagine in some companies, delay by one day cost hundred thousand euro. If you are delayed with integration, and some companies million, or tens of millions. So it is not easy now. It is not something. Uh, it is so serious, by the way. So in summary, let me point it. Lacking continuous integration can lead to slower, less efficient. More error prone software prone software development process. Please keep this in your mind. Right? Then I will take you to another concept. You need to know about it. Uh, it is called the three ways. What's the three ways? And this is like a, a great concept. You need to keep it in your mind. You can apply it everywhere, you know. So the first way is called the flow or system thinking so imagine you are the developer and you want to deliver to the customer so the idea of the first way is to make this as quick as possible to make the flow smooth and to look at the system as a whole not to make local optimization so this is the first way about the flow making the flow smooth and look at the system as a whole, not to make local optimization, right? And even, you know, I remember I was sick like two years back. I talked to the doctor from DevOps. I told her, you are fixing uh, my problems in a local optimization. You just fix one thing. But my, my, my body is a big system. You need to look at my body as a whole system. And I took it from DevOps. It helped me, by the way. I was like troubleshooting myself using DevOps. And you know, the doctor knows my problem by my troubleshooting, not from her own uh, her own capability, from my uh, my capability as a DevOps engineer. So I told her, look at my body as a system and don't make local optimization. Don't fix the stomach problem. Don't fix my ear problem. Look at my body as a system. You are doing local optimization. So when you work with your system, with your company, look at is as a whole. Don't fix something here and there. Look what what will be the impact. If you fix something here, you might impact the whole system. So this is what it means here: flow and system thinking, system thinking, thinking, and make sure that the flow is going. Then the other one is amplify feedback. This is feedback loops. This is from. Uh, from customer to the developer from right to left what does it mean i want the feedback as soon as possible from the customer so here i want the flow to the customer quickly here i want the feedback from the customer to the developer quickly i don't want to have the customer uh, failing a pain and it will come to me after uh, after one month i will lose the customer it should come to me instantly that he's suffering or she, right? And the third way is culture of continual experimentation and learning. What does it mean? It is every day, every hour, I have con on a, all the time feedback loop of continuous learning. All the problems are learning opportunities, right? Let me give you an example. Maybe in the next level, I will explore more. I will explain to you more. But the first round, just know the concept. Just know the idea. Understand the basics. Go and browse the internet, understand it. 
what does it imply for you let me give you an example how to make the flow uh, moving quickly smoothly by reducing the size of your ba work batches starting from defining small user stories this is one idea then limit the work in progress do you remember i told you don't multitask if you are a team of four make your work progress five, four only maximum four or three then make visible the workflow make it visible so that you know where is the bottleneck and reduce the handoffs the more handoffs you are there you have you are reducing the workflow and how hunt your constraint you need where you need to know where is your constraint here because this will block you for example hisam is like moving fast and another colleague is like moving slowly the one who is moving slowly will block the whole flow so you need to focus there and so on the other uh, amplifying feedback loops push quality closer to the source so move the pain as early as possible this is another concept move the pain make it earlier and they call it uh, arsalan shift lifting shift shifting lift moving the uh, feedback the test cases as early as possible because bugs if they are found in a later stage it is more costly if it is coming from the customer it might be 1 million if it is detected by a developer it might be 10 euro so you need to make it as close as possible to the source and swarm the problem as soon as possible immediately conquer the problem don't wait it will accumulate and it will have a compound effect and learn from the problems make your quality control efficient with uh, and error free then what about the third way of learning eradicate blame don't finger point don't go to finger point no arsalan did this mistake no hisam make this made this no this is not a team spirit eradicate blame you know do you remember blameless discussion you know and rehearse failures learn from failures no and even it, uh, uh, I, I encounter it for example netflix they uh, remember this concept chaos engineering they introduce maybe 13 years back something called a uh, chaos monkey what does it this uh, chaos monkey do it will go to their environment kill it uh, crash it and uh, they want to make sure that their system is working even if you remove some instance here there, and there so you need to encounter the failures prepare for the failures and analyze and improve on a daily process right on a daily process, pro, uh, fa uh, on a daily basis, you need to learn. You need to uh, learn something new, learn from the mistakes, learn from successes, and foster experimentation culture, right? I hope this is clear, the three ways. Keep it in your mind. Okay. Does CI embody the principles of the three ways in DevOps? Yes. Big yes. So. The principle of flow, CI promotes the flow of changes and feedback across the whole development uh, cycle, and it reduces the lead time. Then, what about the second way? Yes, CI prov provides immediate feedback. After running the test cases, immediately it will notify you. What about third way? And CI fosters the cultures of experimentation. You experiment, yeah, you get feedback, you learn from it, and so on. So it is an enabler for all these three ways, right, guys? I will conclude with this uh, uh, statement. Keep learning. I would like to end my um, lectures in something positive. Keep the continuous learning. Keep learning from successes. Sharpen it. Keep the momentum. Celebrate your uh, successes. And celebrate your failures. Sometimes companies, they celebrate the failures, the mistakes, and learn from them. Okay, guys? With this st statement, I conclude my topic here. Hopefully, you understand it, the concepts. In the next level, I will elaborate more here about these concepts. <laughs>